What's up, awake people? Better brace yourself for this one. Obama, who's known for choosing her battles very carefully, is revealing her personal feelings about President Trump in her new memoir. The Washington Post has just published an excerpt from Becoming before its official release on Tuesday. Mrs. Obama writes about the president for pushing the false idea that Barack Obama was not born in the United States and therefore was ineligible to be president. She calls it crazy and mean-spirited, dangerous, and deliberately meant to stir up the wingnuts and kooks. Mrs. Obama writes, what if someone with an unstable mind loaded a gun and drove to Washington? What if that person went looking for our girls? Donald Trump, with his loud and reckless innuendos, was putting my family's safety at risk. And for this, I'd never forgive him. According to the AP, the wow. also writes She's that she never going to forgive Donald Trump, the president of the United States, for speaking his mind. So let me take a, take a deep dive into the uh, mind, the mind of a great American, Michelle Obama, right? President of, president of the United States' <clears throat> wife. Uh, and, uh, you know, for the sensitive, uh, sensitive folks, I know, I know it's fucking, you can't say, you can't say certain words. You can't say white motherfucker, Negro, fucking gook king, you know, fucking kike. <laughs> you can't say, you can't offend people anymore. Everything is, everything's a fucking racial slur. Everything is, uh, is, is, is hate speech. I'm not allowed to speak anymore. I'm just allowed to be a fucking robot like everybody else, right? That's that's what we're at. Right but anyway, so if that sort of deep dive, the sensitive, the very sensitive type of of speech is what you crave and what you need to understand the world around you. Then turn the station off, right? This is this isn't your channel. So uh, Michelle Obama, right? She's so she's um, she wrote a book, and I'm going to play some clips uh, from the you know fake news. Is had an interview. She was on ABC uh, interview, and you're going to see the clips. And uh, I, I just you know I put together a little bit of a compilation. So let's watch some of that now, and I'll come back. Michelle Obama's new book, Becoming, is a very personal look at her life, both inside and out of the White House. She says she hopes the candid book generates conversation. As America's first black first family. We're on Jeffrey Boulevard. This was where the rich kids lived. <laughs> and then you'll see we'll cross the tracks. Uh oh. And we get in the, my neighborhood. There's one time that you write about that, I think you were about 10 years old at the mm -hmm. time. And your cousin said to you, why do you talk like a white girl. Mm -hmm. It was one of those kind of moments where it was like, Psh, you're not like us. Um, and it was because of my speech. At this point, the viewers who are watching this, there are a lot of people nodding. Because when you grow up in the neighborhood, you know, you could get your butt kicked going to school if you look too uppity or if you were studying too hard. So I had to grow up learning these two languages of how do I fit in with my family and my community and still excel. They weren't freewheeling parents. They were still black parents. <laughs> um, they were still black parents. <laughs> In the fall of 1981, Michelle entered Princeton University's freshman class. She says Princeton was scary. Fellow students and mentors gave her the confidence to succeed, as she explained in this Instagram post, sharing a young photo of herself in front of Princeton's library. It was the first time uh, I had been in a predominantly uh, white situation. So I had to learn how to adjust in this new world of wealth and privilege. World of wealth and privilege. He's still a law student mm -hmm. at Harvard. Yeah, right, a first year. First year. <laughs> You're going to be his mentor. Yeah. He comes blowing into town, a little bit famous already, late for the first meeting. Late, late. I was like, is he trifling? Is this the black man's gonna be late on the first day? Is this the black man's gonna be late on the first day? I have my suspicions when a bunch of white folks fawn on over a black man. I have my suspicions when a bunch of white folks fawn on over a black man. Cause I sort of think, okay, he can talk straight. So they think he's wonderful. But I'm not gonna date the one of the few black summer associates, Robin, how tacky. And so there were people who didn't know what a black woman was and sounded like. And I remember talking 
to you during the campaign mm -hmm. about the criticism mm -hmm. and you said you didn't really pay attention to it. In the book, you admit it. Yeah. You said, this stuff hurt. Yeah. This yeah. stuff hurt. Yeah. This is not normal. This is not politics as usual. This is disgraceful. It is intolerable. For Mrs. Obama, the stakes could not have been higher. She writes, I articulated my rage and my fear, along with my faith that with this election, Americans understood the true nature of what they were choosing between. We were now up against a bully, challenging the dignity of our country with practically his every utterance. What you haven't said before, mm -hmm. you said, I will always wonder about what led so many women in particular to reject an exceptionally qualified female candidate, to reject an exceptionally qualified female candidate, and instead choose a misogynist as their president. The vibrant diversity of the two previous inaugurations was gone. Someone from Barack's administration might have said that the optics there were bad, that what the public saw didn't reflect the president's reality or ideals. But in this case, maybe it did. Realizing it, I made my own optic adjustment. I stopped even trying to smile. So she's, she's, a, she's a black woman in America. That's how she identifies herself. She's black. She looks, she looks inward and looks out at, at the world through the eyes of someone who is, is black. And all the baggage in her mind that, that, that uh, is accompanied by that blackness. And the thing that holds her back in her mind is those people over there, those white people, the whites are preventing me from, from, I don't know, something, right? right? But you see, she went to Princeton University and people welcomed her with open arms. See, the racism, this is racism, right? She sees herself, she sees herself differently and allows her fear, right, of the unknown. Oh, the scary whites, right? That, that they, they, they don't like me. Right. They should accept they should accept me into their circle and they should bend for me as rather than rather than me go into a circle of something that I want, whether it's a job, whether it's uh, a school or a, a position at a law firm, rather than rather than me excel in my own merit, they should they should bend because I'm a black woman. That's the that's my read on this. I mean, this is this is a fundamental problem in America, and this is this is why so many people are pissed off, right? Right? White people, white people are pissed off because look, if you're not if you're not black, if you're not a woman, if you're not a, 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 an immigrant, some other minority, what's left? You're a fucking white person, right? <laughs> and then t t go one half of that is a white male. Right, which is the the most hated creature on in the country right now. The most hated creature in the country, the white male. Then you flip open all the the history books, and who who founded the country? It's white men. Jefferson, you know, fucking Washington, Madison, all, all white guys, right? But now, now, no, no, no. Times have changed, and. Yeah, they were good. Were they good? I don't know. Now they're racists. They own slaves. They're fucking the scumbags, right? All a bunch of scumbags, and we got to get you know we got to get rid of them and replace them with with uh, with with uh, affirmative action. Got to stick some 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 others in there, right? Just because they're other, not because of merit, because they're other, right? Michelle Obama, Melania Trump hasn't asked me for help. Oh my God, she hasn't asked me for help. I'm the first lady. She's got to ask me for help. I don't want your fucking help. You got to ask me for help. I'm so fucking sensitive. You better, I don't want your fucking help, bitch. I don't need your fucking help, bitch. Fucking, I'm fucking Donald Trump's wife, man. Fucking Donald Trump's wife. But my husband said, you're any fucking resident. You're any fucking, at least because I'm black. Huh? You're any fucking black. I'm a fucking strong white woman. Strong white woman. <laughs> 
Uh, so fucking, okay, let's check this shit out. Former First Lady Michelle Obama. Michelle Obama says <clears throat> she took a page out of Laura Bush's playbook and reached out to Michelle uh, Melania Trump to offer advice on her years as First Lady. Has has she reached out? Asked ABC anchor Robin Roberts during a sit down with Obama on Sunday. No, said Obama. No, she hasn't. <laughs> I know that Laura Bush reached out to you mm -hmm. and said, if you need any help, I'm a phone call away. Yep. Yep. You wrote about how and have talked about how you extended that same courtesy to mm -hmm. Melania Trump. Has she yes. reached out to you and asked no. for any help? No, she, she hasn't. Trump's communication director, Stephanie Grisham, confirmed the lack of correspondence in a statement to CNN on Monday. Ms. Trump is a strong and independent woman who has been navigating her role as first lady in her own way, the statement said. When she needs advice on any issue, she seeks it from the professional team within the White House. <laughs> Affirmative action is a bad thing, right? When... When there's, if we gave affirmative action, for example, in sports, if we said like, oh, this guy runs faster, right? So we need to tie his, tie his, his leg behind his neck when he's going to do the road race, because the person that's slower needs a equal opportunity, right? right? It, it raises the question, are, are all people created equal? Are some people faster than others? Are some people stronger than others? Do some people have the talent to play a better to, to play to play better at a game like baseball, basketball, football? Are there people who have a certain talent or boxing like could, you know, fucking one punch knock a guy out, right? Is that is that something that is we learn it or is it is it an is it an innate talent it's something that makes us different right because if we're all the same then then what are we are we really all the same is there are people what i'm saying is are all people created the same are some people i'll give you my i mean my example of in music i mean there's some people that just you say to yourself well why is bruce springsteen or or, you know, Elvis Presley or the Beatles or, you know, Michael Jackson. Are they, are they, are they, were they given a, were they handed it to them on a silver platter? Or are they just that good, right? When Billy Joel pens a song, you say to yourself, ah, anybody could do that. He's not really a great singer and he's not, he's not really, you know, the words are very simpleton. Yeah, but try to do it, right? He's that good. See, that's the difference, right? People, I don't think people are created equal. I think that there are people that are smarter, that are better apt for certain positions, that we should yield to people that are smarter, not based on color, not based on gender, what's between their legs, what's not between their legs what color their skin is, what color their skin is not, where they're from, the, the, the tone of their, 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 their uh, vernacular. No, what's important is the merit, the ability to get the job done. Right? Are all people created equal in terms of getting the job done? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think that I think that human evolution, now you could say, well, the, the certain people didn't have certain opportunity to excel because the others were holding them back. Now, there's truth to that, but that's called competition. That's called Darwin's survival of the fittest, where we don't make excuses for the weak. We can support them and give them an opportunity to excel right through healthy competition not as a handout not when you say oh, this person's we got to give them a handout we got to give them better housing we got to give them you know cash assistance we have to give them 
stuff. We have to give them a highest score on a, on a test grade, you know, the entrance exam into a college. You get an extra 20 points. Oh, you want to be a fireman? Great. You get an extra 10 points because you're black, because you're Chinese, because you're, not because you're Chinese. Chinese get, Chinese get deducted five points because they're supposed to be smarter. Right? But all this, this affirmative action shit's got to go out the window. And people like Michelle Obama are hopefully the, the end of that. Right? Maybe we're seeing the end of it. Maybe she's the dying breed. Maybe it does. There are signs of black America realizing that they've been duped by these, these people for so long. This mindset of separation for so long. Right? Maybe they're starting to wake up. There are signs of it, but very few. Not, not overwhelmingly. Right? The, the divide is still, still there in terms of race in America. Now, even if you solve the race problem, right, you still don't solve the economic problem. And here comes Conti the socialist. Now you could turn it off, right? Fucking jerk offs. Right? Because the problem is not, is, is that racial shit that's going on is real. And the, the Michelle Obamas of the world are real. But the real problem in this country is income and wealth inequality. See, if you give people equal wealth, not in an affirmative action. So you could, you could jump to the conclusion and say, oh, well, you just said no affirmative action in terms of race, but now you want affirmative action in terms of money. But here's the difference, right? In cor corporations are not people, right? Corporations, banks, with trillions of dollars in, in assets are not people. Now, they're, they're not even individual corporations anymore. They're conglomerate, conglomerates of so many different corporations thrown together. They're monopolies, right? And they're the ones who are the problem right now. And why? Because they control the wealth, right? It's only 1% of the population is controlling the other 99% of the country, right? So rather than, rather than the black accuse the white and the white accuse the black and everybody accuse the Mexican, accuse the banks of causing income and wealth inequality. And how do we solve that problem? Not by fighting amongst each other, but by fighting, by looking right at them and saying, okay, well, you don't pay tax. Why does, why does the guy down the block pay 30, 35% of his paycheck goes to tax? And you, you're, you got a cut from 34% down to 20% of money you don't pay anyway because you diverted offshore. Now, the, the important thing to realize is you don't realize just how much money that is. These are J.P. Morgan, uh, uh, Wells Fargo, Goldman Sachs, uh, Citi. These are two and three trillion dollar corporations, net uh, uh, market capitalization. They're huge money power, right? And they don't pay tax. So when you look for the money to pay for universal health care, that's where you look, right? If you're looking for the money to, to uh, you know, end the poverty draft, well, there's the money. You just raise the minimum wage, right? If you're looking for a way to, to end wars, well, there, look at the corporations because they're the ones who are making money on the military industrial complex against an enemy we don't have, spending $700 billion a year, right? That's where the enemy is. The, look, look to the corporations, right? Oh, oh but, but Kathy, you can't tax the corporations because then they'll leave. Guess what? They already left, right? They don't, they don't, they don't do business here. They take their business there. Right? They go to, they, they take, they use us as a, as a, as a home base, right? Headquarters in Phoenix, Arizona. Headquarters in New York City downtown, yeah, but they, all their business, not so much the banks, but the 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 um, the manufacturers like Apple, all this shit's made in China, and all their money is sitting in a bank in Dublin, thirty five billion dollars in, in 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 unpaid tax. Right? So, if you want to say all oh, these corporations will take their shit and go away, they'll take their ball and go home. No, they already did it. That's the point, right? That's the point. And false flags, 
you know, shit bombings and shootings, fake bomb shootings, racial tension, right? Wars abroad, right? That's the that those are the smoke screens. I mean, I love to talk about it and I and I will continue to talk about it. You know, the, the issue of the you know, like the, the Patsy Bomber, excuse me. Right? And the, the, the fake shooting, what appears to be, excuse me, a fake shooting in Ventura, California at borderline. Over the borderline. Borderline. Remember that song? Keep pushing me. Right. So the fa the false flags are fun and interesting. And but but for what they are is basically they basically are distractions. Racial tensions are distractions where the most sensitive, the hypersensitive, radically sensitized, sensitive gay community, colored community. Ooh, I said colored. Ooh, ooh. Conti said colored. The colored community. Well, colored, other than white, right? Because that's the enemy is the white. So I guess everybody else is colored. I mean, that's a that's an Archie Bunker phrase, right? Right? Are you are you offended by that? Are you offended by that? Are you offended by color? <laughs> the coloreds, the whites, the blacks, right? It's all bullshit. Don't don't you get it? Right? That the words don't really matter. It's just fucking. It's word salad, right? Oh, I'm offended. I'm. Why are you offended? That's the problem. Ah, there lies the problem. A deep sensitivity, deep sensitivity within yourself. Right? That is the solution. Oh, fucking hey, man, fucking look at it's my. Oh, you mean it's me? You mean it might be me? Damn, shit, it's fucking crazy, guys. Fucking, shit, I can't believe this shit. Saying this shit on TV, saying this shit on YouTube, man. Say it might be fucking me. Oh my god, I gotta think about this. Shit. I fucking, yeah, it's me. It could be me, you know.